he is right prime minister's office when they say they two different things what i am alluding to is because there is a nexus between the two that is what makes the whole thing precise, suspect precise. and that is why all this correspondence is taking place precise. to wash up their own responsibilities precise. Precise. now question that comes in people have to ask is who authorized it yeah did the intelligence agencies of the country give their consent to a deal because let me share it as an air indian we had very clear directions from the security agencies that if you have a caterer abroad if you have a cargo hold abroad and it serves pakistan international airways do not give business to that thing. which means but we're not dealing with to, pakistan hold it hold it if you're looking at ethihad yes. and as mr swaramanyu swami has been alluding in his mail that there are a lot of pakistan nationals on the senior management of ethihad who have a decisive role to play now the question takes a wider dimension it is not only doling out commercial interest in helping a foreign carrier at the expense of indian carriers and indian airports but also harming but did the prime india. minister not know all this on the 22nd so when the he asked for a meeting is, to be held this is what vinod mehta very rightly said you've taken a decision and are then analyzing it the question is who faltered hold them responsible hold them accountable who, who let them come out in the open who faltered if 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 see, who the faltered game is no, no, no no who faltered i go back i go back faltered? to vinod mehta one no, second one second one second right right aryaman sundar aryaman sundar somewhere yes mr sundar well who faltered where is the doubt if it is actually got the approval from the prime minister from the pmo how can you turn around and say i am not responsible the buck stops somewhere and it certainly stops at the top i don't know what we are asking who faltered it's as though some minister had quietly did something prime minister was not aware he came out and it was totally hidden from him this is nobody's case the prime minister is suggesting the pmo wakes up and says oh my god no, no, the what a mess we have made and are, trying are, to backtrack now mr sundaram with unambiguously i can say this that there is a clear fight on between the prime minister's office and the civil aviation minister i think we can be clear enough to say that absolutely ajit singh says had the of prime course. minister not of clear course. because he and he's right and he's right but who do we blame for it in the case of mr raja the survival of the government was at stake in this case in this case mr vinod Look. mehta is the survival of the government at stake Because of the RLD, even the Uttar Pradesh elections were over in which no, the RLD was affected. No, it's become a habit. It's something else. It's no, Mr. Well, Mehta, it's no, become I, a I habit to shield the I'm Prime not, Minister's office I, from everything. I don't think it's just a habit now. I don't think that the survival of the government is at stake. Then what? But what this whole incident shows is the kind of decision-making processes that we have in the Prime Minister's office, which is the highest office in the land. and the kind of due diligence they do for a deal now i would be very interested to know from the prime minister's office what are these new concerns that have now arisen today which have forced him to give this whole deal back Correct. to the cabinet secretary and to these ministers to examine and what are Mr. these concerns no, no, he said no, no like mr mehta know, Mr. why these concerns were earlier ignored and what they are what Mr. are these are there security I, I, concerns no, no, are there commercial concerns are there concerns about who, who owns jet airways i mean we need to, we need some answers no, you there just are six, can't keep quiet and keep fudging no, there are six concerns off and say no this no, no, what matter. what what happens here we, is we need some answers no no what what is happening here is that there is a what what does this pmo note say the pm on note details out very important details out everything which happened so it is documentation being created by the prime minister's office to defend the prime minister in case tomorrow there is criticism of his decision that's one thing is very clear everything is being written out the following points are made and this is very important for our viewers first the prime minister's office says ajit singh was pushing for it ajit singh wanted an urgent deal ajit singh said there will be embarrassment if if the deal is not signed on time and then it goes on to say that there were different six different reasons why the prime minister put out objections including the fact that delhi airport will lose out including no, the, the fact that traffic airports, will be directed spent in airports yeah. and, and all then, the seats will be cornered by etihad yeah. they would have the bulk so, of the traffic so, and all london and us Adnab. passengers would go via no, 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 can i just come in adnab no can i complete Air india would be Adnab. wiped out international no, operations so, 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 of so, mr mehta mr mehta in following up to your question the prime minister's office Adnab. says the prime minister's office says mr mehta that we told you so we said a calibrated approach was necessary but four top ministers felt it was not necessary i agreed to it and therefore later because i wanted more transparency in other words because i had a 
rethink on the issue. No, I... because Mr. Swami wrote that letter. No, no, no who is the Prime Minister of this country? It was thanks to Mr. Swami. Ajit Singh, these four top ministers are Dr. Manmohan Singh. Who makes the decisions here? I mean, it's all very strange that you can say, Mr. Prime Minister says that Ajit Singh was <laughs> uh, was pressing him for an early decision. If tomorrow Mr. Ajit, say, Ajit Singh says India should declare war on Pakistan and say, please do it immediately, <laughs> will the Prime Minister do it immediately? So the, I mean, he's the Prime Minister. He can tell Ajit Singh, go back to your office, give me some time, I need to go through this. But he didn't say so. And therefore, Kamal Faruqi, I go back to you, there was an opportunity, there was a moment, Mr. Faruqi, when the Prime Minister could have, you know, possibly held back this controversial decision. My question to you is, if the Prime Minister says tomorrow that I was ill-advised by four of my top ministers, and therefore between 22nd and 24th of April, perhaps we gave this whole thing a clearance in a way that was not appropriate, would you forgive the Prime Minister for taking such a hasty decision? Would you fault him or would you fault the other four ministers? <laughs> no, we definitely uh, would like to take uh, the, uh, st uh, take stock of the whole thing and it's a very serious issue, very, very serious issue and uh, it cannot be taken lightly and I'm pretty sure that uh, our leadership uh, will take a view on this because this is, this is so a very where are you taking issue a view? that Prime Minister and two cabinet ministers so where are I you think, taking I the view? Take I think we'll Faruqi uh, ji's job we'll today is to play we'll like the we'll night batsman, uh, the night watchman. He doesn't want to take no, any view because they no cannot night. decide no, when no, they no, want no, to pull no, the plug no on this government. I think the important Pirish, thing, Arnab, you, you are my professional colleague. No, 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 Pirish, you are my professional colleague. You, if you could have, if you could have uh, heard me in the morning, I have said the same kind of thing. And I had objected to it, both on the security aspect as well as the uh, inter-ministerial uh, uh, conflict with the Prime Minister. So it's a very, very. I think your issue. actions and don't uh, reflect uh, your words uh, usually, uh, sir. The actions need to start reflecting your no, sir, words. But, but what, what is also surprising, Arna, yeah. is the kind of confusion that has been generated. Let's look at it this way: the Prime Minister's office got a realization, a belated one, that there was something amiss. Now, what was the simpler way out? Get the proposal before the cabinet, debate it, right. dismiss it if you want right. to do it. Right. Now, what was the need for creating so much of documentation Hello. to do it? To defend this, himself. This, this is what to I'm, defend coming to. I'm coming to it. So, you're basically going beyond the usual exactly. with something else in mind. Exactly. And you're creating it and you're landing yourself in a greater kind of Th a Therefore, my second, my second question is, and I want to go back to Aryaman Sundaram on this, but I take your view first. Batting almost like Mr. A. Raja did, though I am not at all trying to suggest that Mr. A. Raja implicated of corruption, Mr. Ajit Singh is not. I'd like to clarify that. But using the line of argument that A. Raja did, Ajit Singh says tonight that, look here, this is good for the people. Mr. Ajit Singh's principal argument in his interview with Sanket Upadhyay was, this is good for the people, people will benefit. There will be more traffic, there will, you know, prices will come, lots of... How can they come down? There will be a monopoly. Why it is not good for passengers and why it is not good for Indian industry? Let's put it this way. Jet Airways is acknowledged as one of India's finest carriers, nobody doubts it. How is it that it has not been able to make a success of its international operations? For the simple reason that Lufthansa, KLM, British Airways have been operating for a longer time, sure. have a larger capacity and therefore they can edge out Jet Airways, leading to its withdrawal from various many sectors from which it introduced flights. No, the argument, no, the argument, the argument, no, no, no. the argument uh, put is, the argument put is there is more competition, there is more capacity uh, and airfares will come down. Coming, coming the 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 point. Now, what happens here now is, when you take away 1 lakh seats, I'm talking of 37 plus 13 from India side and 37, 13 from the Abu Dhabi side. A lack of seats with their cornering 80, 85,000 seats, they will have such a stranglehold that other Indian carriers who have just become eligible to fly internationally will not be able that's to do That's the typical so. Air India man no, speaking. No, it's not right. That's the Air India man speaking. Let me come to the Air India specific. Now let me come to the Air India specific. No, no, why, 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 why should I? Why should, 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 why should
Let there be greater competition. No, let's let let no, let no no what's 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 playing playing where is the competition it's in fact reducing I, I, I'm I'm putting this whole argument out that why should this why should we be first of all who in this country said that the government of India should spend taxpayer money to fund Air India now Abnab, that you you didn't ask us when you you didn't ask us when you used taxpayer money to fund Abnab, Air India so Abnab. why are you using that argument today that Air India will be killed because of the deal does the viewer today care whether Air India Air is alive India. or not Please remember this? I'm not talking of Air India I'm talking of the entire aviation industry. Now, I'm not, if you, I was to look at it, let Indian carriers give competition, carry passengers, offer lower fares. Why are you putting, pitting them against a foreign carrier no, no, no. who've got different interests to look at and it harms Indian Arnab, aviation let me, industry? Let no, me no, just no. intervene a little bit. I think you've got it wrong. The competition cannot increase by this deal. It is only going to get killed. Now, other airlines I'm given to understand have been asking for bilateral arrangements and seats. And for years on end, their files just remain pending. Yeah. Nothing is approved. Now, what was the sudden ticker which made this government and the Prime Minister first ask... Better relationship Minister. with the UAE? Right. So now they have said this point that the UAE has a large sovereign fund and can invest a lot of funds. Therefore, we should push this... That's what Anand faster. Sharma said. So they have acknowledged, they have acknowledged that the Jet Etihad deal was linked to these bilaterals. These bilaterals were cleared in a hurry to give it to this deal, give it to the company with whom Jet was doing this deal. In a way, it's an acknowledgement but of corruption. It? It's an acknowledgement that the bilaterals were increased yeah. only to allow this deal to go through because they wanted the sovereign fund to let's invest. Let's be clear, Mr. Which Goel, means there today, is something to, ulterior let's be clear, in this whole transaction. Mr. Goel, I was only playing devil's advocate. I'm not at all convinced with Ajit Singh's argument. And I want to place on record for all the viewers watching this program tonight that we did speak and I made a personal phone call to Ajit Singh. And Ajit Singh refused me an interview and I have kept that offer open to Mr. Ajit Singh to appear on the program tonight. I am only saying what... Aj this is what Ajit Singh says. I put that to Arya Mansudram. No, no, I, I actually no, no, welcome... No, 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 even right now, if Ajit Singh is Abhra, watching the news, I'd like him I, to join Abhra, the program. Can I just add here? No, no, the question, I, no, the question put, is, the question is like input? 2G, like in 2G, one second, like in 2G, one, I'm coming to you, Mr. Bhatt. Like in 2G, the people of the country are being told that passengers will benefit. This is what Ajit Singh says. Aryaman Sundaram, I want your response on this. One should understand this is just an enabling resolution for three years. Obviously, no airline is going to use it any completely. This is an enabling resolution that will help passengers in future. So Ajit Singh says we are doing this for the passenger. Small cities like Bhubaneswar, Ranchi, Tripu, Jaipur and Trichy will get connectivity. Passenger and their connectivity are the key things. You buy that argument, Ariman Sundaram, that this is all being done not for a private deal, not, not, not to get an early mover is advantage. That, is that a, yes. Is that a tacit, is that a tacit admission? that our own airlines, including the national airlines, are incapable of uh, connecting these smaller cities. Is it also a tacit admission that our own airlines, including our national airlines, into which much of my tax money goes every year, is uh, incapable of giving the passenger satisfaction? I do not understand where we are heading. Are we really saying that this country, which we keep saying is going to be an economic superpower, is, capable, is incapable with its own airlines, with its own infrastructure, to provide all this and that we are dependent on a foreign airline? I'm sorry, it, it sounds absolutely... Well, that's exactly what the Ajit Singh is saying. I don't want to uh, mince words on it. <coughs> that's, that's precisely know, what Ajit Singh words. is saying. That's why I started by saying, please don't... I am not commenting. That's why in the beginning I said there are two different issues. One is the wisdom of the deal itself, yeah. the wisdom of the FDI in that sector itself. That's one issue. The other issue is the way the PMO has been dealing with it. These are two different issues which I was separating. Now, if I have to talk about the deal itself and whether FDI should come into the sector at this juncture, I, I, I have a lot to say about it, including what is worrying me is that FDI is usually something coming in and adding to the infrastructure within that's, the country. That's true. That's Whereas true. what I find here is there seems to be an indirect aim to come and take out of the country. <laughs> yeah, or to now, that it, seems yeah. to be a bit of a well, difference. Well, that's, which, uh, I, I, well that's, that's, uh, that's very, that's very, very well pointed out. And, and what the second time I want to say on the news are tonight, we did ask government representatives, they've chosen not to come on the Anna, program. Anna, One second. Anna, Vinod Anna, Mehta, Anna, I, want to, I want to come in on the Anna, politics of it. No, I want to come in on the politics of it. No, what's it?
My question to Vinod Mehta is this. Now stop talking about related issue. No, my question to Vinod Mehta is, 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 okay, Mr. Bhargav, complete your point and then I'll go to Vinod Mehta. You see, Please let's go. not forget that on 18th of April, yeah. Secretary of Civil Aviation, who heads the Civil Aviation Ministry, convened a meeting of all airlines, airport operators, Department Finance Ministry, etc. Each one of them had opposed grant of seats to Ithihan. What do you expect them to do? Hold it, hold it, hold it. Do you expect rivals no, no, to say, it. please come no, in? No, listen to me, please. They opposed it. Now, the question in bureaucracy is, if you have held a meeting, there's a certain view expressed. What were the compulsions that were taken into consideration for overruling the consensus decision? And, and who took that decision?